with the one and only Glover Teixeira, kind enough to join us here on the program. Hello, Glover, my friend. Bom dia. How are you doing? Bom dia. Boa tarde. Boa tarde. Yes, it's, very good. it's afternoon, right? I screwed that up. It, well, it's 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 the morning on the West Coast. It's the morning on the West Coast. Yes. Okay. Uh, good to talk to you, my friend. Thank you so much. How crazy has life been for you? You're, you're, you're approaching your first title defense as champion. You won the belt eight months ago or so, five, seven, six months ago. At this point, like life as a champion, would you say that it's more hectic as life as a contender, life as a regular fighter? Well, uh, definitely more to do, you know, definitely more to do, but uh, it's it's all fun stuff, you know. It, it, it is more to do because I'm the champion and, uh, you know, right now more interviews and stuff and uh, but before parents here and there and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying this, uh, this whole, you know, thing that is going on right now. When, when you used to dream about life as champion, about finally getting that belt, uh, was life like you are living it right now? Like what you dream life would be like, has it turned out the same way? Or once the sort of shine rubs off, is it just kind of regular life all over again? Uh, you know, man, I, um, li listen, I always t tell this, my life changed when I got to, to USC, you know, uh, martial arts changed my life. And when I got to UFC, uh, changed financially, uh, you know, all the fights that I had and, uh, uh, situation that I'm in right now, situation that I was when I come here 20 years ago, and situation I'm in right now, it, it's beautiful, you know. And the belt is, I just wanted to be the best. I wanted to hold that belt uh, for years, man. For 20 years that I that I watch UFC in 2002, 2001, actually, that I watch UFC and I say I'm going to be UFC champion, I'm dreaming about putting this belt in my waist just to be the best. I, I really don't think about, like, uh, you know all the uh, belts and whistles that mm -hmm. comes with the belt. You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter too much to me. My life is great. Uh, you know, man. After I got in UFC, after I fought John Jones, pretty much I bought my house and I was like, man, I'm all set. <laughs> UFC give me the, the the MMA give me. I made it. You know, UFC the, the MMA give me the uh, the house, a new car. So I'm living an American dream. And uh, from now on, it's just, man, it's just fun. You know, there was some talk of uh, this fight and the Charles Oliveira fight happening in May in Brazil. And I love that yeah. because both you guys have put in so much time. You've had your ups and downs, but you're now both champions, Brazilian champions, getting a chance to fight back home. I would imagine that excited you greatly. What happened? Why, why didn't the event happen in Brazil for you? Uh, I don't know. I think uh, it was a pandemic going on. The, the COVID was pretty bad over there still. I, uh, man, I, there's no show, you know, so they change it. I was a little, little upset about it, but hey, it's got to go on, you know. What was your, uh, your reaction when you found out Singapore, that you'd have to go all the way to Singapore to defend the title? At first, you're thinking like, oh, man, you, first you come to like the, the hours, the timing, yeah. you know. That's what the, the, the fighters think uh, uh, at all the time. But, uh, and then I, I, I go back and I, uh, man, you know, it's like uh, Singapore. Is, I've never been there. It's going to be a beautiful country. And uh, I'm just going to go and enjoy this ride, man. I'm just going to enjoy like I did it with uh, Dubai. You know, when I, when they, 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 they Dubai was little, was little because, I had the five fights in a row. We call Robson, you know, and, and yeah, I yeah. start over there, my winning streak. But it's all here in the United States. And when I got to fight for the title, they sent me all the way to Dubai. I'm like, it's going to mess yeah. up something. But uh, I just stay positive. I say, you know, let's go to Abu Dhabi. Let's enjoy the the desert and let's be a champion in the desert. And uh, went over there and it was beautiful. And now I'm going to Singapore with the same, man, with the same... Um, enthusiastic, you know, like I'm going happy about it. And uh, as far as the, like the amount of time that you'll spend there, you know, it's kind of a science, right? You want to get acclimated. So when do you go out there to Singapore? Next week, we go going, uh, take Monday, uh, we're leaving. Okay. So that's plan what, two weeks beforehand. You feel comfortable with that? Two weeks. Yeah. yeah two weeks is enough. I, uh, I feel like, uh, you know, man, I, I am not a good sleeper, but like I am, Good sleep in the week of the fight because I got nothing else to do. Mm. So all I have to do is to train one hour a day, and the rest I can just hang out. Man, I'd be like a 
like a cat. Yeah. I, every time I lay down somewhere, I sleep, you know? Well, this is a really interesting fight, and uh, Yuri's a really interesting fighter, very uh, unconventional, right? I mean, his striking is kind of all over the place. He's a different kind of cat. Have you brought in anyone to try to mimic him as you prepare for him that tries to copy his style? No, no one. No, no. We uh, we have the same same guy that I've been trained with, man. I have five guys right now that he is like top of the food chain, man. You know, he just got to come and watch the training. We got two boxers that it's like... Uh, Finelli Jr. and uh, and Ali, my 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 boxing coach, uh, son, you know, sons, and I have uh, Alex Pereira, Wellington Turma, Caio Magalhães. Those guys are more MMA guys, but uh, yeah, man, I feel pretty good about it. I, you know, it's hard to who who you bring it to mimic, uh, uh, you know, try to to think of um, uh, Michel Pereira because he's all like uh, awkward like that a little bit, but uh, hey, man. It comes to situations, it's so hard. I just got to worry about my style and what I'm going to do, you know? Uh, I, I'm assuming you've watched him, right? You've watched his fights. Yes. What do yes. you think of his style? Because he does get hit a lot, but yet he's very unconventional, so he'll he'll do some crazy things over there. But at some point, you would think you reach a level where that style isn't going to produce victories because he does open himself up to getting hit, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he got... He got hit a couple of these fights, you know, um, eh, man, and, and uh, he opened up, you know. I, I, it's one of those things, like, uh, if you watch him and you watch a guys like uh, John Jones or even the fight that I had with Gustafsson, they didn't commit. They didn't commit to the to the punches, you know. And uh, him, he might he might go, he have to go, you know. He wants to win the title. He might go for, for knockout and he'll have the knockout thing, so he's going to open up. Like, uh, like I say about Jan, Jan is gonna it's gonna be a great fight because I know Jan is not gonna be the guy that's back it up, you know. Mm. Very smart fighter, I say, like John Jones, very smart, very, very clever, little hit and don't wanna get hit. And um uh, and um uh, we, you know, not so smart because we just go over there and we wanna fight, man. Wanna, you know, get in there, fight. And I like the the type of guys that fight like that. I know the jury have a different style, and I'm aware of that. We work on it. We have a very good guys to work. The only thing is the eye. When you work with the eye, is the the main thing to to work. You know, it's not like uh, nobody's gonna make. Uh, it's not gonna be jury style. And the training too is like uh, because what what happens in a fight is one strike. Man, one strike changes the whole you know dimension of the fight. You know. So one punch kid, and it's and the training is like you get hit, you get hit like I get hit from Alex Pereira, but who knows like if in a training, if in a fight I get hit by him, if I stand up, the same thing as him, you know. He get hit by me like, you know, and and take down, but it's just what we work the eyes a lot. We work the eyes, and we have uh, uh, because of those guys been helping me so much, uh, uh, Ali and Fernandito, the. Uh, they so fast with the hands and and with the head movement that make me very sharp on my wow. on my boxing. So how how do you work the eyes? Like what do you do to work your eyes? Oh, uh, just you know, just uh, drills, light spar. You know, we spar like today we do we do spar like Mondays we do spar that we stay at, we stay like uh, in the middle, you know, in the line. We cannot move the foot; we just move the head and mm. hit. You know, don't get hit and uh, trying to counter, counter punch. And I do this with a high level boxing and with Alex Pereira, that he's that's his thing. He's a counter punch. You know, he, he come back and come back. So those those work the eyes because you got to be fast on those punches that you throw and know that he's got, they're gonna come back with something. And uh, that's what jury is good is good for. He wait around a little bit, he keep the hands down, and he wants you to commit, like you say. He keep the hands down. And he doesn't care too much. You know, he getting hit. He wants to get this punch over there, and, uh, and of course, there's something that I gotta be aware of. And also is the takedown. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm gonna have the takedowns there when he coming in. Like, you know, he, he knows I'm gonna go for that leg. Um, so I want to get this clear. Uh, you spoke to my good friend Guilherme Cruz, the Brazilian beast, and you said to him recently, "This fight, and then hopefully one." November or so, and then you're done. The dream is you win this uh -huh. fight, and then you win the next one, and then you're retiring as champion. So, in other words, this is your last year of competing. Is that accurate? 
Listen, um, I didn't say that for sure. I say, I say this, you know. I say if it's a perfect, it would be if I win this fight. That I, you know, of course I am confident. I'm comfortable. I mean, I, I. But the thing is, like, if you when you guys ask me a question uh, way before I get in the camp, it's almost like, ah, oh, man, maybe I fight one more time or two more. It's almost. But when I'm in camp right now, man, I'm a, I'm a lion, man. I'm ready. You got to come to see my train, and then you'll see, like, you, you, you're probably not even going to ask that question about retired. Because is the, the way I've been training, the way I've been feeling, the way, I, like, the camp is going lately. I'm so happy about everything. And um, eventually I do want to retire. I, I, I say that it, it is a perfect uh, a scenario you'll be – me beating these guys in Singapore and uh, hopefully fight Jan uh, at, at Madison Square Garden uh, in November and then call it a day, right? But uh, I don't want to make a decision like that. I think that's a possibility, but I don't want to do it like, oh, I'm going to retire to see you my couple more fights or this and that because it's it's tough man so much uh, fights out there so much uh, uh money in, in the game and uh then i'm just enjoying like i say i don't want to make a call and be de- desperate later like uh, i i even mentioned uh Ciru, Cerudo, Henry Cerudo, like nothing against the guy i love the kid you know but uh, it's just you see him retired but then he knows he don't like he keep want to come back you know he keep he knows he have something some more and um, I don't know. I don't want to make the this decision like that, but it uh, would be a possibility, yeah. Mm. And and honestly, the reason I bring it up is not because I think you should retire or to want to push you out. My response was going to be, no. why would you do this? You're at the top of the food chain. You're the champion. If you win July 11th or June 11th, excuse me, and then you go to Madison Square Garden and win, you've worked your whole career to get to this point. Why would you walk away now? You're the best light heavyweight in the world. Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, uh, you know, man, I don't know. It's just like uh, I'm not doing it for the money, you know. I'm not doing it for the money. I did it for the championship, and yes, they were, like uh, I keep say- saying to people, like uh, we work so hard in our life, like uh, uh, fighting for nothing, you know, and now it's going to make a good money and step it away. But, like, uh, you got to look around, you know. You got to look around, like, uh what is my life been? Why do why I need more? Why do I want more? Why do I, you know? And um, it's definitely not for the money because um, I'm fighting right now because I'm the champion. I wanted to defend this title. And, uh, you know, man, 42, 43. I thought about this like a while back, right? While back, I say, if I fight to a 40, it'd be, it'd be, be great. If I fight in UFC, until I'm 40 years old and retired, for, you know, and UFC, that, that's going to be amazing. And look at me, I'm 42 going on, 43, you talk about 43 years old in November. Um, and you're the champ. Man, it's it's going to be a time that uh, that is going to stop, you know. Like I say, I love the I love the fight. I love the game, Ari. I love the, the, the camp life, you know, uh, to, to be prepared for a fight. But I also am 43, uh, 42 going on, 43, so, um, you know. It's time to start thinking about it. You know, I want to I wanna retire from the sport. I don't want to do sport to retire, me, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you've uh, seen some guys where that's happened and, and you don't want that. Yes, yes. See some of that. And you see Khabib, man. I, 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 man, I take my head off to Khabib when he, he retired in the top. You know, it's like a, it's no motivation by money. You know, it doesn't care if you make it 10, 20 million. They offer him so much money. It's not going back because... Uh, He's just done, you know. He doesn't have it. He doesn't want to do it anymore. And uh, and that's going to be me. Uh, uh, the day that I don't want to do it anymore, man, that I don't want to get myself into this going, is going to be the time that I, I, I'm done. Like I say, I love the camp. What's, what's hard right now, it's off camp. Uh. Because off camp for me, I have to be in like a... This is in my mind, in a decent shape and always checking my weight. And I'm always kind of like, uh, because camp, I know I have that boom, you know, that tunnel and like three more weeks for me now. And I'm like, feel good. My weight is good. And I just, you know, you pay attention to what you have to do. 
and you're going. But off camp, it's kind of like, oh, man, it, it, it does annoy because you have to be in sharp off camp and it's come to time that I, and that's what I say because I say, I can't wait until uh, I, I'm free of this, you know, of that. Like I can actually sit down anytime and I, hey man, have a hamburger and a beer and not think about it. My way to the training tomorrow. Right. It's going to be fun. Nice little glass of wine, something like that. You don't have to worry about it, right? A glass of wine, I never worry about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not more ashamed. I don't can't wait, but I never oh, worry about right. it. <laughs> I, I drink a glass of wine anytime, man. Even during camp? Oh, yeah. It's good I, for your heart? Yeah, no, my, it's good for it's yeah, definitely. Man. It's good for your sleep. You calm me down, relax, you know. Don't do it too much. Like I, I usually do, you know, off camp I do yeah. bottle easily. Oh but my god. I, I, yeah. A bottle in oh, one sure. sitting? Oh man, you know. Just, you don't know me, Arrow. Yeah, well, you don't know me, man. We gotta hang out a little more. I know, I know. You always hang out with my ask friend Chuck boy, in Connecticut. Ask your boy Chuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what all by yourself or you share it? Oh man. Well, it, I share if you want me to, but if you share, we got to buy two. Oh, my God. Is it red or white that you like? You like red, right? Red, red. Right, red. Is yeah. your, what's your favorite one? Yeah, but hey, wine is nothing, man. Wine is not. I used to put down a bottle of whiskey, man, all the time. Like um, That's crazy. Yeah, man. Was In like, one sitting? It was wrong. Yeah, oh, one sitting, oh, one party, yeah. Jeez, Louise. When's the last time you did that? Uh, last time I did that. Let me tell you, last time I did, last time I did a bottle of whiskey, I did, I drink so much. I drink a bottle of whiskey. I drink a bunch of Hennessy. I drink a bunch of was was my fight got canceled for Anthony Johnson. Oh, I got my fight got canceled for Anthony Johnson. Uh, Anthony Johnson has some problems, so I was in camp. I was ready to go. I got so pissed. I say, you know what? Let's party. They called me on Saturday or something. I say, yeah, let's party. So we went out and we party, and um, and you know, end up three, three. I think three weeks later, I had a, I had that fight with yes. Anthony Johnson. It was the worst fight of my life. We it was all fights, thirteen seconds. So at that time, I uh, when I realized, like, hey man, I'm never gonna drink a hard liquor again uh, into I'm done fighting, and I did. Of course, after the belt, I had to do it. Uh, when I when I won the belt in Abu Dhabi, Olaski was there. Andre Olaski was there with the bottle of whiskey, and I was like, I gotta get sick of this, you know. And we drink it, but uh, yeah, no hard liquor, man. I saw you sent a nice message to Jan before his fight, and then of course he wins. It was unfortunate the way he won, and he says now he hopes that he'll fight. You know, the winner of this fight, either you or Yuri. Uh, do you think that the performance and the victory warranted a title shot? That's not my job to think, you know. The reason I say is, is he's not number two and he fought uh, Radic, right? Racket, yeah. Racket, yeah. He, and the racket was on the line for the title. That's the reason I say. Mm. I, I just look at the, I say, if Radic win, he's going to fight for the title next. No doubt about it. He wanted, yeah. he wanted to jump in before Jiri. Mm. He wants to fight Jiri. He think Jiri is not, you know. And uh, Young beat him, uh, whatever it is, you know, uh, when you go over there, my friend, you go over there to fight and whatever happen, happens, and uh, and that's what I think Young is the next. Man. I uh, uh, was going to be ready, and now he can't be Young, you know, so I don't know. Uh, that's what I say, and I think he's, he's, he's next. Who else would be next? You'd be okay with that, fighting him again? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to fight him again. Um, I was thinking. John is a great guy, man. It'd yeah, be, it'd be a nice, you know, like uh, uh, I'll give him a, I'll give him a nice bottle of wine to say he gave me a beer last time. I know. know he's a great guy. He's one of the best. Great guy. Uh, uh, I was just thinking a, an interesting story. If they didn't want to give it to him, and I'd be totally fine with it. Imagine if Anthony Smith beats Magomed Ankalaev, and then we have the rematch of your fight. You remember he got. He got blasted for it because you beat him up so bad in the corner and all that stuff. And now here's his opportunity to right that wrong. I feel like there's a great story to be told there as well. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so of course, it was me too. You know, it's another great guy. Uh, it's not about like a great guy. It's about who's next in the line. Sure, sure. You know, it was the, the, the best guy over there to fight. Yeah, 
um, and um, any of those guys. Uh, and Kalaya too, he's a great fighter. I talked to him in Abu Dhabi. He was there. He fought the same night. I say, hey, man, I know we're going to go all the way to the top. And uh, we're probably going to go to, to the title. And I, and I told him, I shake his hand. I say, I'm going to beat the title. I'm probably going to see you soon. And uh, look at look at here, you know this 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 thing is, is going on. If he beat Anthony Smith or Anthony, like like I say, I, I that's not my job, you know. Uh, I'm I'm off the there, so I just like uh, I'll be on call, man. I'm gonna go, you know. Right now, only one focus is Jiri. If I beat Jiri, and I will, and uh, just be on my phone. Whoever, whenever I like to be, you know. I like to be in New York because yeah. they're fighting uh, everywhere except around here, you know? Right. Uh, Abu Dhabi, Singapore. I just want to ask you two last things because you're you're a veteran of the game, and then I'll let you go. The first one is, what did you think of Charles getting stripped because he was a half pound over? Did you agree with that? Yeah, man, um, <clears throat> he's still the champion for me, yeah. you know? Uh, for everybody in his mind, he's probably the champ, you know? Um yeah, it was uh, it was crazy. I I uh, I was was ridiculous. If it was a couple pounds, it'd be like uh, I would say unprofessional and his his part. But he's more he's a half pound, and everybody knows about the scale problem. And um, yeah, man, he's the champion, man. He's still the champion. And uh, they if they strip them, that's the law, and that's the law. But hey, I agree. I, I you know what I mean? Yeah, I am. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, that's wrong, you know. Uh, it is kind of wrong, but uh, what are you, you going to do? You know, it's a law. What yeah. And what about, the, you know, a hot topic? It's always been a hot topic, judging, scoring fights and whatnot. I want to see open scoring, where the fighters know what the score is in the middle of the fight. Would you be in favor of this? You've been fighting for so long, 20 years now. Would you like to know what the score is in the fight, or do you like the current system where you only find out after? No, to you know is is good, man. Of course, you know for co- for the coaches, for everybody, you know it's good because a lot of times I'm in the corner too, and like uh, even with the Alex Pereira last fight, uh, mm. he look at me and he say, and his foot was hurt, and he look at me and he say, hey, you think if I keep it this space is good? And 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 I didn't know. I was like, ah, uh, no, man, just go in there and give it all, you know, give you all, take this guys out of there, don't. You know, don't 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 take it to the seizure. So he pushed a little more. Because what are you gonna say? You're gonna say to the guy, yeah, this pace is good. It's it, you winning, but when you know for sure, hey man, you two rounds above, you know, just don't get knocked out. But uh, I, I think it's gonna be I, I don't think it's gonna be as exciting for maybe, who knows, man? Uh, like myself, if I like I got knocked out by Gustafsson because my coach come to me and says, You wanna win this fight? You go on over there and you knock this guy out. So I went after, you know, I went after the whole five rounds. But that last round, I was like, I have to stay here. I have to uh, either kill or die, you know. But that's my mind. But it, who knows, man? You're going to go see some born-ass fighters. That they already know they're winning. They're going to be like, oh, man, I'm winning. I don't have to do anything else. Just moving around, and maybe the other guy is already losing. He don't want to push it. So I don't know. Could be bad. Could mm. be bad, you know. By the way, you mentioned Alex. Uh, you think if he wins his next fight, he's ready for Izzy? Like based on what you're seeing from an MMA standpoint, you think he'd be ready for that jump? Or I mean, that's a big time fight he has, right? He's got Sean Strickland. Hey, 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 hey Ari, uh, yes. it's nothing. They take nothing away from uh, Jiri, you know. I mean, from 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 uh, from other sign, you know. But I think Alex has been ready for the sign. Uh, I, in the first fight in the UFC, you know, I knew huh. he was going to climb the ladder. I, I already know because they style. Style making fights, you know. And Alex getting better and better and better, man. The guy's the IQ, fighting IQ is so high, you know. He's so smart. You don't understand. This This guy is a genius when it comes to fight, man. He used to talk to Lioto. Lioto say the things that he say only he's Lioto's father say to him. Wow. And when he see the thing, he learned it so fast. Uh, this is about grappling, all right? Uh, but uh, for Adesanya, he was ready before he, he got in UFC. He was ready for the first fight he had in UFC, you know? Wow, that's a big statement. Because of that, because of that style, you know? Right, right, right. I don't think Adesanya have the ground 
to beat him or uh, take this. It's going to be a striking battle. By the way, what about Anderson, huh? Still, I mean, look at Anderson over there. You see him this weekend. Uh, Anderson, man. Anderson is the man that uh, you look and uh, I look him uh, when he was a champion of the world and training in Brazil and I look him training, man. And I say, ah, I don't think, I think if I train that way, I feel, I feel bad, you know, like I, I don't feel good to go in a fight because he trains so relaxed, so nice, you know, moving around. But uh, I learned some of the training with Anderson in my old age now. And um, it's working, man. Those things that he does, man, he's, uh, because he takes care of himself very right. well. Right, he's 47. You still got like five more years to catch up. You can still keep <laughs> going. He's yeah. killing it. Yeah. Moto- motivation. That's right. Don't listen to these people trying to get you to retire, right? Five more years, Glover as champ. Why not? You could break John Jones' yeah. record. Hey, man, who knows? You know, I, the reality is this. You know, I'm, uh, I'm at the point right now in my life, like I say, uh, uh, the money is good. Yes, like, uh, like Kwame said, money is always good, you know? Uh, uh, you want to buy a, what do you want to buy? You want to buy a, a house in a beach in Brazil? Or in the, uh, then you, you keep fighting. But the re, I'm in a position that uh, I can stop at any time. Man. I can just do this for fun and stop when I, when I don't feel like to do it anymore. I don't, you know, and if you box, it comes around to box one of those guys. I'll box a little bit. I re, but, uh, you know, I'm just enjoying Day by day, man. And that's what I say, like, hey, man, if it's a perfect scenario, I defend this belt two times, I call it a day, I'm tired of this shit, you know? And I then I don't have to train and fight anymore. Hey, it's a possibility. It's a possibility of fighting for another five more years. Who knows? Let's see what the, I'm not. I'm not thinking about the future. I'm, a, I'm only thinking about the now, man. And the now is June 11th in Singapore. Glover, you're the man. Good luck to you. Safe travels over there, and good luck in the fight. Can't wait to see you back in there. Thank you. Thank you. All right, man. Obrigado. There he is. Uh, Glover Teixeira, the reigning defending UFC light heavyweight champion. He returns to action on June 11th. 